Hello, this is Dial H for Hero Clicks, episode 273. I'm your sexy ranch and co host, Calderness. Howdy, howdy, let's get rowdy. <laughs> Hello, everybody. Joining me in the studio today is my sexy co-host, Simeon Bruce. Ooh, that's me. Look at my face. I'm pretty. He likes to think that. And not only do we just have Simeon this week, ladies and gentlemen, we are joined by a very special guest, Snaggles Gaming, a.k.a. Joshua Essex. What's going on, Josh? Hey, how's it going, guys? Thanks for having me. It's absolutely our pleasure to have you on. Really quick, I'm going to go ahead and read this. Dial H for Hero Clicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest Hero Clicks singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Every week, we like to start off with what made us happy. Uh, we're going to have Simeon go first. All right. What made me happy this week was uh, for anyone that's a fan of college football out there, it's uh, ramping up. And what that means for me is that with my job, I've been selected to basically uh, post the scores on the billboard that's outside of town. So come game day, I get to wait in my car listening to the radio until the game is over, and then I get to shimmy up the billboard, and I get to, like, hand put the like score on the the giant billboard that's gonna be fun for me okay oh this awesome. is this is for nebraska football only i should mention oh. that go big red that's that's them yeah. right that's them even the corn is I think yellow so. okay i think so the sign's blue though oh, so. oh of course because it's well, uh, sponsored be by blue cross blue shield i think i, I mean we're not sponsored by them so it's okay if i'm wrong blue. but okay <laughs> It's sponsored by someone. Right on. A blue but, uh, yeah, it's basically like um, I'm contracted out through my company. So it's pay under, like, it's paid through my company, but it's like a contract job. So I get paid way more than I would normally get paid to do this. And that's that's the really high point for me. <laughs> right on. Money is awesome. Josh, you got something made you happy this week. So this week, what made me happy is my wife and I are actually moving into our first house. And not only does that mean no more renting, but it also means I have my own room to stream out of. Ooh, right Which on. makes me supremely happy. No more tiny apartment. I guess yeah. I forgot to ask, do you do uh, Josh or Joshua? Like, what's the best? I, Josh is fine. Josh. I'm right okay. like back. <laughs> oh, I'm glad you asked, because I was going to call him Mr. Snaggle for the entire episode. <laughs> oh, of course. Of course. Well, isn't Mr. Essex, uh, Dr. Sinister, is like what I always think sometimes? I, I think it's that yes. name, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so what that... made me happy this week? Sorry, Kish, out there. Uh, uh, I had it, and then I lost it. SmackDown Live was here in South Dakota, of all places, and it was like the actual SmackDown show, so... I decided I'll go do that. I did not have uh, seats that were, like, close to where you'd be like, oh, there he is. He's on TV. Nah, I didn't really. Uh, number one, I wasn't feeling the energy that night. Number two, uh, my dad w would have uh, would have caught hands with some people if he had to sit down there with that rowdy crowd. So we just enjoyed it. I really enjoyed it, honestly, more than anything in the wrestling and stuff. Uh, the wrestling is always awesome. But I really enjoyed the behind-the-scenes aspect of you can tell when a commercial break is happening. You get to see, because I watch it on TV every week, so you're so used to watching it one way, and then you see it, and you're like, oh, they're rolling out the carpet for Ms. TV, they're getting a chair set up for Alexa and Nikki, like, it's really cool to see the behind-the-scenes stuff. I always really dig that, uh, working in theater uh, for a little bit, so I, I love the behind-the-scenes stuff. I really, I really heavily enjoy it, and of course, it was also a pretty good episode of SmackDown this week, so right on. We can just go ahead and jump right into the interview, if everybody's ready. That is. I'm good when you are. Cool. There's no sound bite for this. That makes it super easy. Uh, Simeon, if you have the questions pulled up, I want to send those to you. Uh, I'll just go ahead and start off first, and we can just shoot this back and forth. Josh, how and when did you get into Hero Clicks? 
So there was a group of three of my friends that had been playing since pretty much Heroclix started. And they had always kind of, like, I'd seen them play a couple times. But uh, one day I walked in, we got our first local game store in town, and I walked in, and it was uh, the Age of Ultron uh, Summer Long OP. And actually seeing the Oreo bases versus, like, I had only seen the, uh, I don't know what you call them, pre-Oreo bases, but they used to look a little rougher than they do now. But seeing all the Age of Ultron figs just hooked me instantly. Um, yeah, so you're relatively new as far yeah. as, I mean, there's. I feel like everyone in the community is always like, I was here from the beginning, I'll tell you how it used to be. But yeah, I started right around like a few, few months right before that too, so I'm right in there with you. The first booster I bought was Nick Fury's Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., so... That gives people a pretty good timeline. I love that and set you, so much. And you oh. stuck with it after that terrible set, huh? Oh. I bought two boosters and pulled uh, uh, Jones. What's his first? Rick? Oh, the, the Rick Jones chase. Yes. That, that was that Avengers Temple, yeah. yeah. That's all right. Oh. Because <laughs> all the Nick Fury chases were vehicles. Amazing vehicles. Wow. I okay. pulled the... Right. I pink, pulled the Kang time toilet, and I was not happy with it. <laughs> so, you caught me in a lie. Apparently, it was Avengers Assemble. My bad. No, I, I appreciate that, because that's a much better set, in my opinion. <laughs> yeah, I, I bought two boosters, pulled the Rick Jones, bought... They had to open another brick, bought two more boosters, and pulled the Chase Iron Man. Ooh. And that Iron Man, I was in love with for... So long. Right on. Simi, you want to hit him with that next one? Yeah, so speaking of being in love with that Iron Man, what are some of your favorite pieces and combos that you like to use? So when I first started playing, I was primarily a casual player. I loved that Iron Man, and there was a cap. I think he was a super rare in the same set, and he was catching his shield. Mm. Yeah, I love that sculpt. Yeah, those were two of my favorite figures. I ran them on an Avengers team whenever we had, like, bigger casual nights. Um, shortly after that, um, the the Mighty Thor came out, like, a year or so later, and um, I loved running the 150-point Hela that would make the uh, Pogs. The Asgard Warrior Pogs, I can't remember their actual mm, name. Okay, yeah. I yeah. would run um, Enchantress with the Mirror, the Chase Loki with the Staff, and I would run uh, Moira McTaggart, the Prime, on that team to give them all triple target mind control. Dang. So that was right after the switch to mind control, and it was so fun. Well, but I then we I have uh, very different ideas of fun. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, my friends would call that a fun foul. Uh, I've had to play against that. That uh, what was it? The Angela, not Angela. Uh the the super air Hella. I've had to play against that super air Hella a lot of times because Devin oh, used guess. to like he built so many teams around it and killing stuff off on his team just to like make those warrior souls and then make attacks with those and stuff is crazy. That is a uh, fun piece though. That being said, right after that, I got my first taste of competitive, and it's been competitive ever, ever since. So my two favorite competitive pieces, and this is a super lame answer, which I was telling you about before, <laughs> is Unimind and Lockjaw. <sighs> for like a year and a half when I got into competitive, because my first tournament was right after the Mighty Thor, I played Unimind forever. Gross. Yeah, I know. I'm a bad person, even for saying that. <laughs> All right. I just want to go on record saying I did beat a Unimind Lockjaw team with a Kite Man team. Hell yeah. <laughs> and it was like, it was a Gotham City theme. Like, it was controlled Batmobile, and like the 75 point, like, Fast Forces Joker, but we still beat him. Kite Man, hell yeah. All I'm saying, guys, doesn't always have to be Unimind and dogs. I guess you kind of already answered this question. I'll ask it anyways, though. Typically, are you more of a meta or casual player? Now I am pretty much a strictly meta player. I know. Breaking my heart, I'm... dude. Breaking my heart. No, that's still I... awesome. 
Get him off the podcast. Yeah, I'm sorry. You're not the lead podcast. Uh, if you don't play Kite Man every single week or three Montanas, you just you can't be on the show. You got to play just absolute garbage. I played Montana today. Did you really? Yeah, I oh, absolutely nice. played Enforcers today. Uh, I've built with Kite Man before. If that oh, makes yeah. you feel better, that makes you feel way better. Kite Man, hell yeah. It's not always Unimind. He's just my default. <laughs> well, and it's good to play pieces like that. Like, I'm not not saying like they need to be your favorite piece, but it's good to play with pieces like that so that you actually know what is going on when you play against them. Because mm. there's been so many times where I'll I'll do both. I'll do casual and competitive, and I'll be in like my like com- my com- casual setting 90% of the time, and I'll bring out like a figure that. I see in competitive all the time, and no one knows what it does. Mm. So it's, it's good to use some of the the gross stuff occasionally. I find it goes the other way, too. When I play lots of casual, and then I switch back to playing meta, that I'll notice a few things about, like extra about the figures that my friends were playing in casual that I'm now seeing in tournaments. I'm like, oh, yeah, I know exactly what that does. So I've seen it used in all the unorthodox ways, right? Hmm. Right. So, speaking of casual slash competitive, what's your favorite format to play? Well, let's let's go with your favorite format for competitive, and then your favorite format for casual. So, for competitive, unfortunately, they just made those changes to rock where there's no limited format anymore. And because I haven't been playing that long, I never really got to experience those formats. Um, In my area, there's only so many tournaments per year. Like, we really only get WKOs and then the odd rock event. So it's pretty much strictly 300 modern as far as tournament. Hmm. As sad as that makes me. Because limited looks super fun. It's crazy when you look back at like what limited rules were, and you're like, no constructs and word balloons. What are you, what are you guys talking about? What is this <laughs> garbage? Really? And you're like, no, no, they were pretty. Constructs were pretty OP. You don't know, bro. You don't know. They're pretty. You were awesome. players when you're like, no BFCs, no feats, and they're like, no blades, fangs, claws. And you're like, no, <laughs> battlefield conditions. And they're like, what is that? Like, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I will say the time when I started, I was really sad because all my friends had these gorgeous looking War of Light figures. And I was just like, what? I missed that set? Can we just yeah. rewind the clock? What's and you have an no chance of pulling it. <laughs> like, I think yeah. two years after that set was done, or that, uh, that organized play was done, they finally opened up sales for those boosters. But... By then, most people had already moved on, and they only wanted the entities. Yeah. Man, we need a new War of Light set so bad. That was such oh. a just dope set. War of Light 2 would take all my money. <laughs> I hope you're listening, Wiz Kids. Yeah. They right, are. So this is the only podcast they care about. That's that's totally true. They only care about this <laughs> podcast. They get all of their ideas from the show. Like, hey, what, I, was, what was, like, what, what told them, was it that you said? I, I told them I was going to keep bugging them until they dropped the pack, and I think it was like three days after that podcast they dropped the pack. So, so clearly. I mean, it totally wasn't in print before that episode dropped, but. No way. No. <laughs> they, they printed it that night. They're like, Simeon's right. We got we to gotta print the pack. We, we got to do it. Um, but no, uh, kind of continuing with uh, the discussion we were having prior, what is your usual venue? Go ahead and shout them out, you know. So we recently just had a venue. We didn't have a venue in town for a long time, but uh, we had Black Cat Comics and Games just open up in town a couple months ago, and she is doing a stellar job of running it so far. So big shout-out to Jess from Black Cat Comics and Games. It's so nice having a shop in town. But I will give a little secondary shout-out to Game Night Games in Winnipeg, Manitoba, because for a long time, we would travel two hours on release day just to get hero clicks. Wow. What state's that in? What, what state is Manitoba? <laughs> uh, that's in Canada. Oh, Slightly what? bigger. What? Calder, you didn't tell me that we were going international. Oh, sorry about that. This is our Alpha Flight episode. Uh, I forgot to mention we have Guardian uh, on the show with us today. My bad. Ooh, that Feels makes, good to that be representing Canada. Right. Yeah, no, it totally does make you puck. You're very short and hairy, so that, that totally works. 
I am one of those things. Which, which makes me, I don't know, snowbird, probably. Ooh. Sadly, that's a terrible thing. Yeah. Ooh. Uh, maybe North Star. Man, don't make me North Star. <laughs> that actually There's works. Been... I have a twin sister, actually. No, that works perfectly. I'll be North Star if I have to. That'll work. That'll work. Gee, Aurora. Whatever. Anyways, enough of that. We have, we have our Alpha Flight ready, so we got Puck Guardian North Star on the show tonight. Great. Great to see you guys, eh? Pretty fun. <laughs> okay. I didn't notice how much I say A eh, until I started playing Hero Clicks with uh, you American guys online. Oh, yeah? And, yeah, you guys point it out all the time. Now I'm, like, self-conscious about my A. I didn't mean to point that out. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry about that. Sorry. All right. I didn't mean to point I, that out. I say like and uh way too much. Yeah. Get that American That's... stuff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but all right, like, uh, tell us about. Sorry, I had to. It was right there. Um, that's kind of our normal questions we have. I want you to kind of tell us about Snaggles. Now, why, why streaming for content? There are a bunch of people that do podcasts. There's some people that do like kind of shorter Heroclix videos. Why did you decide to do streaming? Um, more so because I looked at what was going on in the community, and you're right. There's a ton, tons of podcasts. Tons of uh, short, like, top ten videos, like, best figure out of this set, best figure out of that set. And there was just no, like, way to watch people live in-game. Like, how does that big player make that decision? You know, what is his decision-making process? So I worked pretty hard on befriending a good chunk of the high-tier community and uh, I slowly work on getting them all on. That way, if anyone's looking to bridge into competitive play, they can watch some of the big players play a game from start to finish. Yeah, okay. as a high-tier player myself, uh, I appreciate that. When, uh, <laughs> when I first started uh, playing, I found myself uh, dropping a lot of Facebook messages to a lot of the big guns in the game, like, why do you do this? Why do you do that? And uh, I was just like, why Why is there no place that I can go and just watch this to learn? So I decided to try and be that. I do like that because when I got back into the game, I took I was one of those people that took a hiatus at one point. A lot of people have. They just kind of drop out of the scene. And when I got back, the lack of gameplay content is, like, staggering. You'll find, like, com- you'll find uh, tournament stuff. And you just can't really follow along sometimes with like the pieces they use, or sometimes the pieces are already golden age. And so having streaming content like that is pretty cool. Yeah, and I try and keep it kind of updated. Like uh, I'm doing a series leading into Worlds, and then once X Men drops, I'm gonna do a little series in between X Men and Rock Cup. And then after Rock Cup, I'm going to break it up with some fun stuff because it's kind of competitive off-season. And then I'll probably start back up with the hard-hitting meta and the new year kind of deal. Yeah, you got a short period before Nationals where uh, Xavier School and the Dark Phoenix Saga are going to be, like, viable. Like, they're still both legal. And then after Nats, Xavier School goes away and we lose a ton of stuff. Yep. So kind of speaking of your more um, fun stuff in the off season, this is probably like my favorite thing, like ever, is your older unboxings. So to me, they're nostalgic in a way for for people that maybe have never did the Deadpool set, but like the Deadpool set was one of my all time favorite sets ever when it came out, and like seeing that, I was like, ah, oh, this is bringing up so many good memories. Like I, I love it so much. So I really. I really dig that. And, you know, you did the a Halo set, and for most people, I know I, like, knew nothing about, like, Halo even existing. So what makes you want to do these really weird, like, unboxings, like, unorthodox kind of unboxing style stuff? I've seen a ton of, like, every time a new set comes out, ten different people open up, like, Black Panther and the Illuminati, or, like, um there's going to be 20 people opening up X-Men. You know what I mean? If you look around, you don't find a lot of the older unboxings, especially going, like, way back. Like, I didn't know some of these sets existed until I seen them on shelves. Mm. So I was like, I wonder how many people want to see that kind of stuff. I reached out to a couple shops online, and they're like, man, we have old inventory. Just take it, please. So 
made a deal with a couple of guys online, and I got pff, 10 old sets, I think, so far that I've unboxed. And okay. going back to what you said, that Deadpool one was one of my favorites. I didn't play then, but that set was so fun to unbox. It was wild. It, it felt like the most random figures ever. And then it's like, oh, yeah, Chaser Zombies, too. I'm like, what? Come oh. on. Are you serious? Like, that's <laughs> awesome. Like, I freaking and love I it. And I pulled two of them. Two yeah. of the zombies. <laughs> nice. Like, yeah, I got Magneto, which is, like, one of my favorite characters. And then Kingpin, which is apparently just ridiculous. Oh, yeah, no, on a zombie team, Kingpin's kind of a must. It's it's crazy to see how they've aged, and you're like, man, your attack value is really, really low. Um, but, no, the zombies were, like, a huge staple for, like, a really long time. I mean, until they rotated out. Like, it was great. Um, so, no, that's really, 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 really dope. How's that for content, a, guys? If you're a jerk like Calder... The zombies never rotated. And you That's still right. The okay, so I don't want to tangent too far off, but Golden Age is the best format. Um, you can't you can't fight me on this uh, because that means I can play my zombie team base, and it's freaking awesome. Ooh, ooh, I love that. And the best way to do it is to take it to a local tournament where you know the field is 90% kids, and you're like, I'm sorry, but you know I had to do it to you. <laughs> You, you know that this? makes you a bad man, right? Oh, yeah. Terrible, terrible person. Like, the entire time, the judge, the guy running it was like, you're a bad person. I'm like, yeah, I know I am. I'm a really bad person. But when they were legal, I didn't win anything with them, so it's totally fine. It's totally fine for me to take, <laughs> take that out. And, uh, they had to learn. They got to learn sometime. Kids, if you're getting into Heroclix, the first thing they should totally play against is Felix Faust or a zombie team base, just so they know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you got to know what you're getting yourself They'll into. know that they hate this game. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Simi, do you have any other questions you kind of feel coming to the top of your head you might want to ask? Um, what's your yeah? What's your favorite uh, casual format? Like if you're if you're going in just to have a good time and there's no prizes or like anything on the line and you just are straight up there to like have a good time, what are you playing? What do you want to play? I'm a huge fan of super casual battle royales and like. Bigger point battle royales. Like, me and my friends will play, like, 800, 1,000 point four-player battle royals, and they're so fun. Like, there's backstabbing, there's so many rolls, the crazy dice stuff happens. Yeah. Giant, giant clusters of figures everywhere where you're like, is that your Iron Man or my Iron Man? Uh... So, I play one venue, and... I want to say, like, 75% of the time it devolves into a battle royale. We'll only have, like, five people, and we'll be like, let's just do a battle royale style. And sometimes it's great, sometimes it's not. But some of my favorite memories are when we do that, and stuff like someone will bring, like, KC Flash, and everyone's like, oh, we got to take KC Flash out, like, right away. And I've got, like, the Enforcers team, so I send Montana out to, like, KC Flash, and he's like, yeah. all right, well, I'll just I'll break away. And he breaks away, and... Montana's got that special power where he follows you after you break away. So KC Flash goes like 14 squares away, and Montana just gets placed next to him, and he's like, what? What's going on? I roped you, boy. That's what I did. Oh, jeez. I, I, we got to say that I roped you, boy, as a sound bite. That's awesome. <laughs> I roped you, boy. Okay. Well, right on. I hope everybody in the listener got to learn a little bit more about Josh and what he does over at Snaggles. We're going to play one of the games. I hear it's sweeping the nation, and that's Bad Samaritan. Oh, shucks. I was hoping you were going to say Smash City. That's right, Smash City is sweeping the nation, uh, but not quite as much as Bad Samaritan. So, if you haven't played Bad Samaritan before, let me go ahead and run down the rules. I have chosen three random, well, they're not random, I totally choose them on purpose to make it hard, uh, three Heroclix figures. They are from Modern Age. This is coming out in August 25th, 2019, so whatever Modern Age is at this time, Simeon and Josh are going to be on a team together to try to guess one of these, well, all of these figures so it's going to happen a little something like this. There's going to be three rounds of clues. They have 20 clues, and they get one random clue each round. And that clue will give away one little thing about the figure 
They'll each get a guess, and then I'll tell you if it's wrong or right. If they get it wrong, we move on to the next round. And if after three rounds they still haven't guessed the random figure, then I will get a point. If either of them guesses the figure in any of those rounds, they will get a point. And at the end of the day, we uh, like to see who gets the most points and who's the ultimate loser in Bad Samaritan, who gets zero, and maybe uh, you guys might totally sweep it. So if you or Simeon get a point, that means I don't get any. So if you can totally win against the house, that's always pretty awesome. So let's go ahead handicap match oh it's totally WWE is. fans yeah I'm, I'm gonna bring you a back up after up this chairs. one Simeon you're gonna have to carry me oh that's fine okay so I, Simeon, had, I had to carry Calder when I played with him and uh we both lost yeah we still lost that was that was a rough episode but everybody knows I'm amazing at Bad Samaritan and uh Chris was terrible so <laughs> go ahead and give us uh it's one through twenty uh, we have really awesome clues. Go ahead and give us a random number first. I'll read off some of the clues you guys can get. First number is 33. That's totally not right because it's supposed to be 1 through 20. Oh, this random number generates. Do you know oh, it's set it it's... 1 through 20? <laughs> of course I do. I'm a Professionals, computer. folks. Professionals. We, uh, we do this. The clearly. real number is 5. 5. So 5 is rarity. So... Basically, Rarity will tell you what it is. This figure is a rare. Uh, but there are also other clues, including like named keyword, generic keyword, open damage power, name of set, name of trait, special powers. And whenever we do any power for figures, so like speed, defense, or attack, those will all be top dial at their most expensive value, just so everybody knows. Okay, so if it's Groot, you're not going to get no speed power, you know, special defense, special whatever. It's instead it's going to be like charge, invincible, or whatever he has, top dial. So, you know, the dial no one plays him at. But this figure is a rare. All right. Well, Mr. Schnaggles, if I know uh, Calder at all, I know that he likes two things, and that's America and kites. So I'm going to say Kite Man for my guess. Hell yeah. That wasn't a thing that you're saying you're right. I just wanted to say hell yeah. So my guess going off your America thing would be uh, the rare Captain America from AI. This brings us a very important thing. If you say Captain America, that covers every figure named Captain America in modern age. It doesn't have to be a super specific rare Captain America, which is really great. I don't know why that's a rule, but it's been a rule since the beginning, so we're just going to keep rolling with it. But wah, wah, wah. it is neither Kite Man, hell yeah, nor Captain America. As amazing as those figures are and how much I love them. This brings us to, yeah, you guessed it, round two on the first figure. Simeon, give us another clue. We've got number 15. Number 15 is opening defense power. This figure has super senses. So that is printed on their dial, top dial defense powers, super senses. A rare with super senses. I'm going to, uh, I want to say Spider-Man because that's the most super sensey of he all the figures. Super senses? What are you talking about? I, I know the new rare, it's traded, so his actual starting defense is invuln. But uh, I think the rare from the set of Earth-X had super senses. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock in Spider-Man. Ooh. Mm, that's a good guess. I think I'm going to have to stay in a similar vein with people that always have super senses and go Flash. Flash. What's it going to be, ladies and gentlemen? It's still wrong. It is neither Flash nor Spider-Man. Simeon, this is the last clue. Ooh. Go ahead. Make it a good one, man. I hope so. Number 12. Number 12. Is any special combat symbols? I'm re I really hate to do this to you guys. This figure has no special combat symbols at all. They're all standard. That's the normal boot, the normal fist, the normal shield, and the normal starburst symbol. That is rough for us. Yeah, this game's rigged. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's see. So we basically only have super senses and a rare. Uh, they're not indom, which means they're a bad figure, in my opinion. <laughs> Um, Calder likes his bad figures. Oh, I totally do. I'm going to go with, just because I played it today, I'm going to go with Fancy Dan. Ooh, that's a good one. I'm ha I'm, I'm not going to lie, I'm struggling here. This game's tough. Ah, uh, Super Senses, rare. 
Let's go with uh, a Wolverine? Lost question mark? For Fancy Dan and Wolverine question mark, which may or may not be a figure. We'll have to figure that out. Um, what's it going to be, ladies and gentlemen? It's still wrong. It is actually Batman the Animated Series 044 Lex Luthor. Oh, oh wow. Starting Super Senses, really? Wanna, yeah, starting Super Senses. Super Senses Man. is that really sweet leadership outwit perplex power. Um, but I'm a huge fan. traded mastermind, too, right? No, for he does not have traded mastermind. He has traded, cannot oh. take, takes a maximum of one damage as long as one he's damage. to a friendly character, and he can't be chosen right. when using mastermind. That's what I remember. That was round one. I get a point. Not a nana boo boo, and that moves us on to round two. Simeon, go ahead and give us our first clue of round two. Mm-hmm. Number seven. Number seven, as my phone fades to black and I can't see my thing. Generic keyword. Monster. Ooh. I know, there are so few monsters. There are so, so few monsters to choose from. Man, and I've never faced or ran a monster team. I'm going to go with, uh, I'm going to go with Rune, just because I've been looking at him lately. Is this just in modern? This is just in modern, so they will only be in modern age hero click sets. I'm gonna have to go with uh, Giganto. Giganto. So we have Giganto and Rune, and it is neither of those. Simeon, go ahead and give us our second clue of round two. I don't like these clues, Calder. Uh, well, I'm sorry. It's it's uh <laughs> it's your fault. Uh, so. it, it is this number generator. If you would have let totally me go to, to 33 like I wanted. <laughs> number three was four. a free play, so you could have chose literally anything. No. Wait, now you tell me. Yeah, now I tell you. Go for it. Was it number four? Number four. Set number is 018. 018 monster. Oh, so we could be looking at the entirety of the undead set. Um, man. Zero one eight monster. I'm trying to think of yep, anything. I'm having trouble too. From, from recent memory. Oh man, zero eighteen. That's got to be like an uncommon in most sets, I believe. An uncommon monster. Hmm. Do 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 do. Yep. <laughs> the best Help part about Bad here. Samaritan is how much dead air just happens because it's really hard. Like if I, it feels really good being on this side of the uh, the seat in Bad Samaritan um, because Chris was always always uh, doing this, choosing the figures, and it was really difficult. Um, but I uh, I was always guessing, and it's like man, you're killing me. Like you gave me sidestep, and it's a common. Like yeah, a ton of sides, you know, commons have sidestep, man. Yeesh, you know. And sometimes you'll get. A clue where you just know it right away. You're like, God, Swordsman, or whatever. So it's rough. It's a rough game, ladies and gentlemen, and that's why I like to play it. I know, and Monster, just like the broadest keyword right now. Oh, yeah. Huh. Monster. Let's go. Oh, I wish I wasn't such a meta player, because all I can think of is Colossals right now. <laughs> Colossals and shredders that have rotated. Yeah. No more. Thank the Lord. Plinks. Oh, yeah. Oh, man. Uh, we could make it the rest of the podcast with how much I disliked playing shredders. <laughs> we we would bond on that. I promise okay. you. Uh, I'm, gonna, I'm just going to throw out Hulk. Cause I'm, okay. There's at least a few uncommon Hulks, and I think at least one of them has monster. That's just Is, gotta be. Is the Undead set still legal? The Undead set did come out in 2017. It was after Elseworlds, so yes, it is still legal. Ooh. Yeah, it was right before Thor, right? Yeah. I'm, I'm going to have to go with one of PJ Boland's favorites. I'm going to have to go with the Ghost of Abraham Lincoln. Okay, so we are locked in with the spooky Ghost of Abraham Lincoln and the Incredible Hulk, and it is... Abraham Lincoln, Josh, you get a point. Yes. Oh my gosh. 
Thank you, PJ. Out of left field. Out of left field. The ghost ooh, of Abraham Lincoln. Well, that brought round two to a nice close. I have one point. Josh has one point. Simeon, it's kind of on you, so you don't look like a total loser this match. Otherwise, uh, one of us is going to go home. The clear-cut winner with two points. Go ahead and give us the first clue of round three. All right, round three. First clue, 13. <laughs> Number 13 is opening movement power. This character has stealth. Stealth. Oh, let's see. Yep, my brain just doesn't work when you say opening powers, especially when they're generic. <clears throat> yeah, stealth printed on the dial means that it's not like a Batman, usually. They usually That's, have that team ability still. Yeah, which would be my mind went right away. Be my first guess would be like a Batman esque figure. Oh, stealth usually means like a kind of like in the shadows figure, maybe just like a support piece that hangs back. So I'm gonna I'm gonna say like Black Widow. Ooh, okay. That's a good one. I might be wrong on this, but I'm gonna lock it in anyway. I'm gonna say Nightshade. No, okay. I think oh. I think she has a special movement power actually. Now that I think about it, because she blinks. Killing me here. Seems um, like, yeah, I played like three of her on one team. She totally does. <laughs> There's three Tri-Sentinels, one oh, Nightshade. three tri Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. Thank you very much. Who would play three Nightshades? <laughs> Only a good player would do that. Excuse uh, me, princess. Let's go <laughs> Moira McTaggart, because I think okay. she has top dial stealth. Moira McTaggart and Black Widow are locked in, and it is... Neither one of those. Give us our next clue, Simeon. We're going to add number 10. Number 10. Name of a special power. Twisted leadership. Ooh. Twisted leadership. Uh, this was the one. So this is like Eric Masterson, I think. Uh, not Eric Masterson. <laughs> He's not a leader. What am I thinking? <laughs> Eric Killmonger is what I was thinking. Uh. Except his wasn't twisted leadership. His was like some weird diplomatic something or other. But this is like the one where they remove the action token if the opposing character rolls low on the leadership roll, I believe. So I'm going to go with Black Ant. Ooh. Okay. Mm, that's a good one. I'm going to say Dr. Octopus. Okay, we have one for Black Ant and Dr. Octopus, and it is neither one of those. Bring us to our Oof. third and final round on our third and final figure. I'm going to say number 10. Number 10 is name of a special power. Lucky for you, this dude's got two special powers, so you can go ahead and get two. The other special power is I bioengineered the Hydra. I can do the same for you. Gives slightly more information than Christian. I'm going to let Simeon see if he gets this. If not, I got it. Oh, I, I don't think I'm going to have this. Uh, Hydra makes me think uh, Earth-X, because there's a lot of Hydra in that team. Um, Black Panther, Illuminati, don't think they had any. I'll say Madam Octopus or Madam Hydra, whatever her name was. Madam okay. Hydra, I think. Yeah. I gotcha. You you had the right set. <clears throat> Did I? I, yeah. I got I got something. It's President Osborn. I like how uh, like you just say like it's President Osborn. Like it's President Osborn. We have President Osborn and Madam Hydra locked in. It is Yeah, no, Josh was totally right. It's President Osborn. Congratulations. First ever Bad Samaritan for you, and you won. Not a total sweep, but hey, two out of three sure ain't bad. I'll take it. If we didn't get that special damage power, the second one, I probably wasn't getting it. The bioengineer Hydra thing gave it away. Super duper. It was, if you guys could tell the theme or not, it was all people that have been president before. Uh, I was going to say, <laughs> I was gonna say there's got to be a theme, but I didn't get that far in my thinking until <laughs> it was too late. 
What's sad? You want to know the real sad story? President Osborne was on my team today. Oh, was it the Fast Forces President Osborne? That's it was not. Name. That's oh, why. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was totally the the main set one, and he starts with sidestep. So that's why I was like, "What? Huh? Who? What?" Uh, well, thank you so much for playing. Thank you guys for anyone at home that maybe was like, "Yeah, these guys are idiots." I know what it was right away. Then I really appreciate you. Yeah, I appreciate you, Random Citizen. Thank you so much. <laughs> And Josh, before we go ahead and let you go here, is there anything you want to tell the listener where they can get a hold of you, plug some of your stuff, you know, the good good? Cool. I appreciate that opportunity. Uh, for anyone that was listening, you can find me at twitch.tv forward slash snaggles gaming. And you can also find me at Snaggles Gaming on YouTube and Instagram. Thanks a lot for having me, guys. I really appreciate the opportunity. Yeah, I'd like to have you back on later on to to talk about like your your future content, maybe after Worlds or something. I am good. Anytime you guys want to have me on, just get a hold of me, Calder. You got my number. Right on. Thank you so much for being on the podcast. It was an absolute joy. You take care, man. I'll talk to you guys next time. All right, Simeon, that means we can go ahead and move right on into the news. So this week, whether or not that was WWE related or whatever, we are just going to be talking about the two WWE figures that popped out. And of course, we didn't decide this off air. So Simeon, do you want Triple H or Kane? I'm going to go with the big red machine. Okay, right on. So it ended up working out anyways. Fantastic. So we have a lot to talk about for X-Men, but we're like five figures away from knowing the entire set. So we're just going to let that bad boy uh, stay in the oven a little bit longer. Let it, let it cook until it's totally done. And instead, we're going to talk about the new hotness that is WWE. Time to play the game. Time to play the game. All right, we have Triple H. I'm going to go ahead and start us off here. He has a ton of keywords. This is one of the first, well, actually, uh, these two previews are the first couple of previews where we see just a bunch of keywords on characters. He has authority, corporate ministry, uh, corporation, degeneration X, evolution, WWE, assassin, and politician, which I absolutely love. He has a trait and a special damage power. His trait is signature move, pedigree, close. If Triple H has one action token, make a close attack. Modifying damage, plus one. After resolutions, choose one. A hit target modifies attack and defense, negative one, until the end of your next turn. Or give a hit target an action token. So I totally dig that. It's pretty awesome. His damage power that he has for the first five clicks of his life on his 85-point dial or for the first click of his life on his 45-point dial is Numbers Game. Empower. Friendly characters that are adjacent or share a keyword with him besides WWE can use Empower. So Assassin, Politician uh, are more common keywords that aren't WWE exclusive. They can all get Empower, which is great. Or if you're just friendly and adjacent, you also get Empower. So what can we, what can we do? So top dial, we have Charge, 8 Speed, 11 Attack with Slingshot, 18 Defense with Toughness. He has Toughness his entire dial and 3 damage with Special Damage Power. He has 0 Range. He has Indomitable and, of course, the WWE team ability. He can charge up, and with enough enough adjacent friendly characters, he can just smack someone for six right away, which I super-duper dig. Uh, after charge, which he has the top two clicks of his life, he rolls onto a little bit of, sorry, he has stun for his uh, attack power. It's slingshot, which is his speed power for his next three clicks. Then he has flurry on his last two clicks with a little bit of, or sorry, last three clicks with a little bit of outwit named the Cerebral Assassin, which I freaking love. So he can outwit someone, uh, flurry you, and then if he has a bunch of uh, adjacent people, oh, sorry, that's still his damage power. Never mind, that was a lie. Uh, but I really dig this Triple H. I think he does something really cool. My, my only problem with him, and this is like my problem from the beginning, is his sculpt is him like, you know, doing the spit thing in the air. Yeah. I'm glad I'm glad they have it on someone, you know, because it's super popular, but like, <laughs> man, 
it's going to look so weird playing him on the board. There was a few options that they had with Triple H's sculpt. Um, so this is like his entrance thing. This is he gets to the ring. He looks around the crowd. He takes a swig of his water. He holds his arms up and spews the water in this like, I mean, it's it's dorky, but it's cool. I mean, looks, I'm saying so. It looks cooler when he does it because it yes. sprays up and then it falls down and the lights kind of catch it. Like, yeah. But on plastic, it's hard uh, to explain if you've never watched him like enter and you've never been excited for him to enter. This is like, I mean, it's similar to when uh, like Kane's like the turnbuckles explode kind of thing and all that stuff. Um, one of the other options they could have done would have been like him doing a pedigree, but they would have needed another figure for that. Yeah. And the third option, which I think they could have gone with besides this, would have been him with, like, a sledgehammer, his signature weapon, if you will. That would have been really, really dope. Yeah, I, I think he's great. He's the first one that's gotten – I mean, you mentioned Max Landis' uh, video about Superman last week, and he has another yes. one that's called – Wrestling isn't wrestling. And I got to uh, watch that. I watched it pretty much almost as soon as you like uh, said that. I'm like, yeah, I'm gonna watch this, and it was awesome. It's yeah, it follows Triple H to I think about 2015 or 16. And if you're not a wrestling fan and you have about 20 minutes, I think to kill, um, watch Max Landis's Wrestling Isn't Wrestling, and he does a great job of explaining to you like how people enjoy wrestling and why it's like a great entertainment source because you basically watch these characters, like take your favorite, your favorite TV show, anime, cartoon, whatever. And imagine if it happened in real time over a course of 20 years and like the characters aged in real time and changed in real time. And uh, Triple H was the, the main character of uh, his little documentary, whatever you want to call it, info video, and it's it's pretty great. Right on. Do you want to go ahead and hit us with the big red machine? Undertaker burned me as a child. Uh, Paul Bearer is going to do some stuff. I don't know. WrestleMania, some other things. Hell in a Cell. I'm Kane. That's what I say because I'm, <laughs> I'm Kane. So Kane, uh, number 014, he's a, uh, you know, same rarity as everyone else. So it's you buy the pack, you get the fig you want. He comes in with Authority Corporation. WWE, Monster, Mystical, and Politician. Why would he have Politician? Well, it's because in real life, Kane is now the mayor of a town. I can't remember the town off the top look of my head. Look at all that but... research we did pre-show. <laughs> <laughs> I totally did look it up at one point, but it's it's hilarious because, I mean, these are real people. So after, after their careers are, you know, pretty much finished, this guy's got to be in his, like, mid-50s now, um, they they go on to do other stuff. Some of them have been, like, DDP does his yoga thing. Uh, some of them sadly die because, uh, you know, taking chair shots and painkillers for a living doesn't really do great for the body. But some of them go on to, like, become politicians and stuff. So that's it's kind of cool that WizKids gave us that little, that real little uh, real-life bit there. Um, monster and mystical are two keywords that you can very easily build around. Uh, if he's worth a hundred points on those teams, I do not know, but let's look at what he's got. He comes in at either a hundred points or 60 points, zero range for some reason, but he's got two traits, signature move, choke slam, close. If Kane has one action token and hasn't been moved or placed this turn, slam. When he uses it, modify damage plus X, where X is the amount of, 
your attack total exceeded the hit character's defense value by. So let's say you, you charge up, you hit him. Next turn, you activate his close, and you, you roll like a crit hit. He's going to do ooh. eight damage top dial. His top dial, he's got charge, eight movement, 11 attack with Quake, which is his tombstone. 18 defense with toughness, which is the devil's favorite demon. And a special damage power that he only has, top dial. That special damage power is choose up to four opposing characters within six squares that are adjacent to two plus ropes. So that's ropes are hindering or uh, blocking, again. Um... Make a close attack targeting all of them regardless of adjacency. Each hit character is dealt two penetrating damage instead of normal damage. So he's the the first WWE figure we've got that actually has a power that allows him to do a ranged attack. And it doesn't have to be four opposing characters. These four opposing characters, for those not in the know, uh, with his sculpt, you can see the like turnbuckle there exploding in flames. Yeah. So these... These four opposing characters would be, like, near the turnbuckles, essentially, in a thematic kind of sense. Uh, more likely, they're all going to be in front of him. But if they are, like, in, let's say they're in, uh, like, the old Wakanda map, and they're in hindering, or they're next to a bunch of blocking, they're on, like, you know, in a corner of, like, a, a building or something like that, you just get to explode them with these fiery posts. And that's only on his top dial. He's got a second trait. Big guy. Giant reach of two. Kane can't be knocked back or be given an action token by opposing effects. So that's pretty cool. Uh, we saw the special, uh, I think it was slingshot negates charge and combat reflexes when doing knockback. But he won't be able to be knocked back by that. Because he can't be knocked back, because he's a big guy. He's a his, big guy. I feel like is. there's a couple other big guys that might have this uh, power. There's Andre like, and uh, Undertaker are definitely also big guys. Oh, they're big guys for sure. Um, so his his flavor text is pretty cool. His charge that he has top dial, uh, it's top dial on both both starting lines. It's the big boot. <laughs> he goes from that to on his 100-point line, after his charge on clicks 2, 3, and 4, he gets Flurry, which is the big red machine. I'm a little sad he didn't get Robot for having Machine. And oh, that would have been cool. That would have been funny. Um, he gets Invuln on clicks 2 and 3, which is Shrouded in Fire. If you don't know, The Undertaker started back... Well, The Undertaker started a while back, but the actual Undertaker as we know it started in 91, I believe. And a few years later, is actually several years later, they started a storyline where Kane was his brother, and uh, it was like this weird... Or half-brother, maybe. Uh, It was this weird storyline where, like, Undertaker had burned down their family home with Kane inside and just assumed that he had died. Um, cops never called, you know, arson. Obviously. A, in the no. WWE universe, arson is not a crime. Uh, neither is assault. So, Kane came out with Paul Bearer, and uh, he was this burned monster of, you know, he resurrected, you know, whatever you want to say. Um, just a, a super cool WWE, WWE guy. Um, one of my favorites just because of that feud with Undertaker, and he was always unstoppable in the ring, you know? Just like Taker, he was always just hard to keep down. On his 60-point line, he starts with a special... Or, not special. He starts with Prob, but it has mystical demonology is his, Ooh. his flavor text on that. And he starts with uh, Reversal. So he's got Charge Reversal on that one and some Toughness. And then his last click, he's nine clicks deep. His last click, he's got regen, which is the fire still burns. The best part is just how thematic these all are. It's just, it's so awesome. Oh, yeah, man. and for you know, for as much grief as I'll give the Triple H sculpt, 
this one, even though it's the same thing, you know, it's Triple H's intro, it's like his ring, you know, like, hey, I'm here, crowd. This is Kane's exact same thing, except it's fire coming up from a turnbuckle. There's a literal turnbuckle on the sculpt with Kane, and it's shooting fire up. And that's just... It's just like a thousand times cooler than I might, spitting out water you had in your mouth. Yeah, I might customize the sculpt <laughs> with one of uh, those, like, old flame FX tokens. Ooh. I might glue that to, like, the top of the base somehow. All right, right on. Well, that is... Those are the only previews, or the only non-X-Men previews we got this week. Uh, so that was pretty awesome. I'm going to go ahead and uh, talk about Patreon for a little bit. You can join it. It's on there. We are giving away... Right now, we have first, second, and third place prizes. We are going to be giving away this month a Ghost Rider Con exclusive Mammoth. Um, that is for everyone who is in the Patreon. It's going to be in the raffle. We're also going to go ahead and be giving away a Steve Trevor and a Reverse Flash for second place. And then for third place, we're giving away a Influence Ring, one of my personal favorite rings. I just think it's fun. Free knockbacks, dope. Um, so, yeah. And then, of course, for uh, all of our superheroes and above, we're giving away some Dial H for Hero Clicks stickers this month. So if you are interested, go ahead and check that out at patreon.com slash Dial H for Hero Clicks. Without further ado, let's go ahead and move into community. There are dozens of us. Dozens! So the Community Tuesday's question this week was, do you prefer double-sided paper maps or one-sided neoprene maps and why? Simeon, what are your thoughts on this? Uh, you know, if it was... Oh, let's just say 99% of the time I play on paper. If okay. neoprene maps were more widely available, and they are getting more widely available because, uh, you know, the ROC has their their winner maps, which, you know, you, you get your little, uh, your group together, you pay the ROC 50 bucks, they ship you Winamap, it's a Winamap kit, it comes with a con figure, some goodies, and a neoprene map for first place. Um, they are getting more popular. I own two. Um, I, I just can't bite down and buy the, like the $30 buyable ones, especially when WizKid sends you know, all those ones for free with the LE kits, or the organized play kits. I just I always end up using those, and so I, I've got to go with paper. Right on. I I think neoprene is cool. Like I really like the idea of it. I like rolling them out. I like you know they're really nice maps. Obviously they're great. Uh, one thing I don't like is plastic dice. Uh, no offense to the rock, but especially rock dice since they don't have hard edges, is how crazy they bounce on neoprene maps. Rock maps and rock dice honestly don't go together that well because plastic dice just bounce like crazy on those. I remember the first time I got a neoprene map, uh, or like the first or second time I got it, I'm like, I've got two of these now. I, I went out and I bought metal dice so they would roll nicely on the maps, like just something heavier so they wouldn't bounce like crazy. Um, and... Yeah, so like that's kind of how I mostly for neoprene is how I feel, but I find mean, papers, in my opinion, is the way to go. Uh, for storage, it's a thousand times easier. Uh, for bringing with you to tournaments, it's super duper easy. Uh, I think they both have a place. I think they're both really cool. I think rock prize maps, like prizes, should still stay neoprene. I think that's awesome. You know, it feels like an actual trophy because it's something that is a lot cooler than just a little piece of paper. But for effectiveness and just, you know, bringing to tournaments and stuff, I like I like just the paper maps. Keeping it simple, keeping it normal, and yeah, I I can dig them. If they rip and tear, a lot of people like had problems with this. I'm not just I'm tape them back together. I'm like so what tears. So Simi, you want to go ahead and start us off on Facebook? We only had so many here on Twitter, so yeah, just one. I when when you said metal dice, it made me hurt a little bit because um, if you do use metal dice on paper maps. He oh, will yeah. absolutely destroy them sometimes. And I'm okay with it because uh, maps rotate, and honestly, I don't use the same map often enough where it would ever be an issue. But, you know, just something to keep in mind. If your opponent pulls out a paper map and all you have is metal dice, just be like, hey, I've got metal dice, you know, maybe offer to use a set of their dice if you don't have any other ones, yeah. or just or just give them a heads up. 
Um, people have asked me, and I'm like, yeah, it doesn't matter to me. Like, you know, spit on my map for all I care. <laughs> These go in the garbage when I'm done with them. <clears throat> First on Facebook, we've got Vince Gentile. He says, I like paper, but I'd rather have neoprene. Sometimes I wish there were reissues of older maps on neoprene. Okay. I, I, I dig that. that. Uh, if WizKids somehow issued like a poll or maybe look at like tournament runnings or something like that and they were like man this map gets used all the time let's reissue it as a neoprene map like premium or something and either offer it as like a prize or maybe like just a viable thing if WizKids did that with their maps i definitely think that they'd sell a few like i'd buy you know if they remade uh a mock time on neoprene, I'd get one. Yeah, I played that map way too much recently. That's one of those maps I've ripped a few times, so yeah, i totally buy that on neoprene. Citizen Chris Kurt says neoprene, they don't have creases or the chance to rip. All right. Citizen Jeff Polier, also an anniversary follower, according to Ooh. Facebook. So congrats Thank on you. our anniversary with you. Um, <laughs> <laughs> he says, while I don't usually buy neoprene maps i do like receiving one as a prize it seems a little extra special receiving a paper map as a prize is just so regular i receive new paper maps every month from my venue i also like that neoprene maps lay flat all the time they do if you've ever had to roll a map across an uneven surface uh, uneven surface you fold it out like your paper map and there's a clear like ridge in it or you know you have to I've, from time to time, had to stack, like, action tokens on a map to get it to stay flat. Neoprene doesn't have that problem, so that is a benefit. Right on. Vigilante bonsai tree and sapling, or I'm pretty sure, anyways. We're still, like, five weeks in. Still feeling pretty confident. I don't own a single neoprene map, but they have been nice to play on the times when I've played on someone else's map. None of them have inspired me to chase one down, though. I feel you. I feel you. I'm pretty sure Robin Caves, is that Superfan? That is Superfan. Superfan Robin Caves says, I like neoprene maps more. However, they are much more expensive. I'm totally fine with double-sided paper maps. Neoprene does tend to make for a more enjoyable experience, though. I would love for more to become available commercially. Okay, right on. Citizen Ben Jones said, I should I should probably <laughs> double check that. I sure might be wrong. That's right, I am wrong. Protagonist Ben Jones, he's like, you better watch your mouth there, Calder. He uh, says, I enjoy both. Paper ones seem easier to transport, but the neoprene had the longevity I need when playing with the kids at school. Kids tend to be rough with the maps and fold them incorrectly, making them tear more frequently. All right. Sherry Savannah Anderson says, Both! Paper mats never lay all the way flat, but neoprene maps are bulky to store. So they both have pros and cons. I agree. Neoprene maps to actually, you know, unless you stack them, which you totally could, if you leave them in their box, they will take up more room than your hero clicks at some point. Um, whereas paper maps, you know, you can fit like 70 in a, a small box. Oh, yeah. It's crazy. Citizen Mr. Clicks Flicks said both have their place. I like recording on neoprene, but for travel and easy storage, I like paper. All right. Michael Link says paper maps. Neoprene, neoprene maps are bad. I, I added that <laughs> word. <laughs> They're hard to store, travel with, and are expensive. And they launch dice into unknown reaches of your local gaming store. This brings up something that I, I want, if anyone's listening right now, I want you to, to at me on this. I do this way more often than I should, but somehow when I roll my dice, I throw them both up at like an angle. And when they collide on the map, they hit each other just right and shoot off in opposite directions. I don't know how I do this as often as I do. You know, you'd think it'd be like a, a one in, like, a hundred chance. 
if you were rolling like a normal human. But for some reason, with the wild way I throw, dice always connect like midair and shoot off. So I've never really had a huge problem with neoprene doing it, but just the weird way I roll does it. And I want I want to know if anyone else has this issue or if it's just me. I don't know. I kind of roll like a, a jerk. A lot of people have told me that sometimes, so I might have that problem. I don't know. I see my dice go flying. I don't I don't know if I've ever slowed down time enough, like, the world, oh, and then just, like, looked at my dice and see them collide midair like Simeon has, but you never know. <laughs> Jay's on Twitter says, I prefer to play on neoprene, but the paper is easier to store and transport. Super easy to transport. Um... You don't have to wear them like some sort of toga thing. Like poncho. They they definitely should. Like let's let's get some snap bracelets, some uh, yeah, some pipe like filter. What do they call those pipe? Uh, the little fuzzy wire things. Oh, like pipe cleaners or whatever. Yeah, yeah. Like, some, yeah. Some snap bracelets and pipe cleaners, and let's make an outfit out of neoprene maps. All right. David Phillips says, double-sided maps. I laminate them so they stay flat and you don't get to different terrains. It's nice for variety. I've never tried to laminate a map, but I have seen them. And it seems to work out well, but then you end up with the same kind of, uh, you know, you can't fold them anymore, so you have to roll them. In my opinion, I assume that's what you have to do. Right on. Next up we have... Kirby Ronnie, I'm pretty sure he has a title. Uh, I believe it's uh, Citizen, Citizen Kirby Ronnie, I want to say. Um, but, you know, I'm always wrong about a lot of things. While the quality of neoprene maps is better, I like my old four-player maps, the maps that connect together, the tiny Street Fighter maps, and even the Civil War Battle Royale maps. I enjoy multiplayer games. Additionally, I found a bunch of 12x12 12 12 maps and play small games, like 200 points, no one can be over 75, or multiplayer 100-point one-man army game. Super fast and fun way to get a lot of games in, even if you don't have table space. Nice. I think with the uh, the Regenesis event, we got East Danger Room, so I'm hoping that that's an indication that we're going to get West Danger Room and that those will connect and we'll be able to have some sweet uh, Danger Room versus X-Men kind of battles Ooh. going on. So with the with the comment about connecting them like that, all right, we got another one-year anniversary follower here, Peter Marshfield. He says, paper map, because that's all I have. Don't have any winter maps in my area that I'm able to attend, so I take what I can get. I respect that. That's why I play paper 90% of the time, because uh, just like pulling out like Ultra Chase Thanos, even though I've got one, I feel like a real jerk when I play against people who don't have access to one. Um, I always offer to let people borrow my stuff, but same thing with the uh, win a map kind of stuff where I wouldn't want to pull out, you know, like the docks or King's Tomb on like a casual night. Ooh, King's Tomb. Spooky. That is Citizen Peter Marshfield. Check yourself before you wreck yourself. And uh, Tennis Off here on Twitter, totally not putting Captain Venom on every team, says... For mobility, I prefer double-sided. I cannot deny that I prefer playing on neoprene maps, though. And that is all I have on Twitter. Oh, man, I feel like Facebook is so much better than Twitter because I've still got about ten here. <laughs> so we've got Matthew DePaz. Matthew DePaz? I, I'm sure I just, you know, did not do that. That's my American accent enunciating your name for you. He says, neoprene for the win. No creasing, cocked rolls, glare, rip and tears. Obviously, buying slash transporting them is annoying, but there's something about the play mat material and woven linking that's so pretty to look at. I'll agree with the, the no glare and the no rip and tears. Um, I mean, I'll agree with all of it. I've never had a problem playing on one. Uh, they do cost a lot in shipping. Because most places, most reputable places, I should say, uh, ship them like in solid containers, kind of, and so you'll you'll be looking at you know ten to thirty bucks for shipping a lot of times on those. And then we'll go to another milestone follower. Rick Ryan says neoprene all day, more for the fact that they lay flat and don't move once placed. 
Have you ever had a neoprene map like slide around? I don't think I ever have. Yeah, that that grippy bit on the bottom of it. Yeah, has shot pretty well. Yeah, I've I've never really had that problem with paper a whole lot, but I mean, I imagine if you have like a floor colossal and someone like slightly like slides the paper map, they're all oh, going down. Baby, it's falling over. All right, another one year anniversary follower, Christian Bogan. What's he called? Oh, her? He's a super fan. He's super won that fan. Title. He earned no, that I, title. That's what I thought. It depends, he says. Do you have children who like to destroy your stuff? Do you know how to fold properly? Do you keep your stuff in a dark, dank dungeon? Both sides have their own pros and cons. Easy to carry, store, cheap paper maps are always nice. Plus, they are double sided mostly. So it's like two maps in one. Or the quality of neoprene maps makes an enjoyable gameplay. Crisp colors, soft play surface that grips the dials so less random movement of pieces. Plus the dice don't sound harsh as they hit the mat. They do bounce better though, so keep that in mind. My ultimate preference is neoprene. I like the look and feel of the maps and how they can change the semantics of the game. What do you think? I can dig it. Uh, I mean, I really do enjoy neoprene maps, but I'm such a cheap guy. I would never, like, you know, buy them and stuff. And besides that, kind of with folding, uh, I've messed up folding maps all the time. You just kind of got to let the map lead you. You got to, like, let it fall into place. It's a beautiful dance between man and map to get and these bad boys folded. It's weird if you go through your, like, Golden Age maps, you'll find, like, five different ways that they've folded maps through time. And it's just, it always gives me a headache because I'm like, why is this one folded into like thirds? Why is this one like, you know, you fold it in half, fold it in half, fold it in half, and then fold it lengthways? You know, they just, it's so, so weird. Do you keep your maps in a dark, dank dungeon, Calder? I do not. I could probably keep them in a danker dungeon if I tried. <laughs> I'm thinking about getting a humidifier for my uh, neoprene ones. <laughs> Five-year anniversary oh. follower Jason Carr says... Wow. Paper all the way. Yeah, that's crazy. Five years. I don't even think I was playing that five years ago. He says, paper all the way. So much easier to store and travel with. I think that's that's definitively the uh, yeah. the best part about paper is the storage and being able to travel with them. We got another a three-year anniversary follower. Dan Davis says, neoprene. Sits flat, rolls up for storage, bam neoprene bam i mean i, like I think you could do like a uh uh what do they call this <laughs> an infomercial you could do one of those things neoprene they fold up fat for storage bam neoprene get it roll it real tight slap roll it up the wall roll it out i don't know Makes look at it go sound. and it still won't move use uh, it as a mouse pad <laughs> neoprene <laughs> maps uh brought to you by gamermats.com this is not yeah, sponsored. Not sponsored by Gamer Maps. Just saying, they they kind of make them. Yep, yeah, they they do. <laughs> Matthew Matthew Esch says mixed bag for all the above points made. I I that's where I sit. I'm in a mixed bag. You know, there's great points for each one. Uh, I just tend to use paper more often. Also, as far as a like a judge slash gaming venue point of view, uh, they're gonna mostly have paper maps. For you to use so if you're just starting out and you don't have any maps fear not most of the time when you go to a venue there will be maps provided um, they'll have all their older op maps uh, like organized play and the ones that come out with new sets and stuff they'll have all those for you to choose from usually oh no yeah for sure i think i just showed up to venues and they're like Hey, man, you want a map? We already gave one to everybody else. We still got them. I'm like, yeah, no, give me all of them. Give me all those yeah. maps. One of awesome. each, please. <laughs> yes. All right. I've heard that uh, this next person's nice, but I, I don't know if that's true, Calder. Emily Michelle. She is nicest Heracles player I've ever had the chance to meet in my entire life. And subsequently lose to <laughs> very quickly. <laughs> well, I, I hope I get the honor someday. She says, paper all the way. I hate carrying around neoprene ones. But, I mean, yeah. just got to do the uh, the pipe cleaner and the uh, you know snap bracelet thing and make a, like really a toga. something with that. Make a toga or a robe or uh, I'm gonna do a cape maybe. 
four That's year anniversary follower Johnny Alvarado Jr. says, I like both, but storage is an issue with neoprene maps. I only I don't have that problem. I only have two. So See, same here. I have like two or three and I, I um I put Velcro on the back of my state wind map so it hangs up in my room because I'm, you know, a conceited uh, jerk like that. Oh, I have one of those too, but mine says championship. Oh, yeah, that's right. Instead of championship, so I don't hang it up because people make fun of me for, uh, <laughs> for you know, all those friends I have over that come over all the time. I have I have friends, Calder. Is that, though, really? No, no, it's I not don't. nice to lie on air. <laughs> for your anniversary follower, Sarge Uchiha says, I like the rubber one. The, oh, the rubber old school maps. I don't know what he means. I... No, I was. I I'm not old school enough to to know. Um, he might be talking about the the WizKids ones that were neoprene as well, because WizKids did release a few, I believe. That's one of like the three I own is like the convention center or whatever it was. Nice. Yeah. Let's see, Mark Richards says pros and cons both ways. Double sided paper maps, two maps easier to store, but they wear out. Neoprene is lovely. Feels good. Plays better. No crinkle versus dice. Hard wearing, but only one sided. Bulkier and st- bulkier to store and transport. And then, last but certainly not least, the four year anniversary faller David Herberger says neoprene. Everything stays flat. Dice rolling is better. Premium maps for premium players. Bam! Neoprene. Damn, and, uh, premium no. maps for premium players. Oh, wow. <laughs> Throw the gauntlet down with Excuse that. Excuse me. Okay. I, I am by no means a premium player, although yeah. I have played some premium teams, and uh, I wouldn't say on a premium map. But um, one thing I will say, especially about ROC maps, which, I mean, when we talk neoprene, that's mostly what we're talking about. It comes about. to mind, yeah. Yeah. Uh, WizKids doesn't release a whole lot, uh, any. Um, the ROC does do like some MC universe ones and some more thematic looking ones. So they've got that Wakanda one where the barrier went up and the outriders were like bursting through it, you know, and they've got, uh, what's the half world one Titan half world. I think it's called where Thanos was sacrifice. Yeah. So many like just super cool. Um, I mean, it might not be the greatest map for a competitive play, but for casual, like, I've got this map. Let's set up this team. I mean, you know, you take the minions of Thanos, you take the Avengers, you put them on that map, and it's it's like you're in a movie. No, yeah, no, totally. That was the main reason for me, like, uh, going to any of the states is I was like, I want the map from Logan. I want that, you know, the map from Infinity War, especially Infinity War. That was a map where, like, when I went home and I was, like, top eight, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. All I got to do is win one game and I get the map. And I lost. And I was like, well, I, I'm going to go buy that map now. Like, that's it. Done, done. Like, I got to have that map. It's dope. You know, like, maps like that, I, I freaking love. And I wish they would uh, put out more of those. Those are for sure, like, my favorite kinds of maps they do. And I've got I've got two last points here. Um, I don't – follow ROC News super carefully, so I can't remember where they're sitting right now with this. But at one point, the ROC World Champ was allowed to design the map. So I know uh, Daniel Powell designed the Powell Farm, and that's like a super cool prize to be able to do. And I've seen the map. I've played on it. It's actually like a a very interesting map. Um, Just from like the picture alone, you don't realize exactly what the terrain's doing. And it's a really cool map to play on. And then my last my last point is that if you prefer neoprene but you have a paper map or even just a map that you you know have in your mind you can order your own it just won't be WizKids legal so don't take mm. it to a don't take it to okay. a tournament you know this is the disclaimer don't don't try and take your your homemade map or your you know your recreation map to a WizKids tournament but if you prefer it for, like, even casual play, you could make, you know, uh, Muir Island neoprene if you wanted to. You could make the Amok Time neoprene and, you know, bring it. Um, it would cost a bit of money to do so. But if you're a premium player playing on a premium map, then you might do such things. 
Right on. Is that everything for community? That is that is last that we had on Facebook. Okay, awesome. Uh, thank you guys so much uh, for joining us in Community Tuesdays. Next up, uh, before we get into too many crazy things, I want to go ahead and get into Malcolm Rush's Heroclix question block. That's in Japan! Japan? No, 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 no. I can't go to Japan. All right, so Malcolm Rush went ahead and sent us a bunch of questions regarding animated shows and the X-Men animated series. So let's go do a bit with X-Men animated series, The Dark Phoenix Saga, about to come out. Last year, we got Batman the Animated Series, and next year, we're going to get JLU, Just the Unlimited Animated, coming out. So let's talk about cartoons. Note, all HeroClix players must be a version based on a TV or movie cartoon. So he asked this, and I don't know if there are any other hero clicks based on cartoons that aren't inside uh, X-Men animated or um, what was it? Uh, the just or uh, X-Men animated or Batman set. Uh, honestly, I don't know how many figures they did that were in normal sets that were clearly based off an animated character, you know, like I'm, I really couldn't think of a ton. I'm right there with you. Yeah. So I stuck to Batman mostly because that's the set I know the best. And I know that all those figures were from animated stuff. And even some of the X-Men ones aren't from the actual, you know, animated show. Right, yeah. They're from, they, they pulled from comics where with the Batman animated, they pulled from, uh, like, the Justice League show and, you know, some stuff that wasn't just Batman animated. So that's what I stuck with mostly with my answers. And big shout-out and thank you to Malcolm because – uh, it's really fun answering all these questions. Um, I, I really do like, you know, going back and, like, looking through sets like this yeah. and just, like, you know, thinking about things that I don't normally think about, I guess. Right on. I'm going to go ahead and read number one is best, worst, and favorite hero clicks that is based on a cartoon version of that character. So give us your best. So for best, I had to go with Batman Beyond. Uh, he's got Batman team ability, so he's in stealth. He's got that shape change invuln top dial. He gets to pick random powers. He was a power common in that set, and he's probably I, I don't want to I don't want to jinx this, but he's probably the best and last version of that character that we will see for a while. So that's what I went with for best. For worst, I went with Justice League Flash from the same set, the rare one. Okay. And I actually do like the figure, but I I have grievances with the fact that in the TV series, the cartoon, um, he just was way more powerful than what they gave him uh, in the set. I feel like he, he should have been a little bit more beefy. Um, maybe a little bit more fast or I don't know, something. He was just uh, lacking in a, a little bit for me, for my taste, for the, okay. the animated series. And then my absolute favorite from the Batman animated series from cartoons was Apache Chief. Oh, yeah. I don't think you He's can go man. wrong. Yeah. <laughs> Anuk Chuck, I don't think you can go wrong with Apache Chief. Um, I... I so desperately want him to be competitive and there's not a lot of ways to do it, but his whole, uh, big man token thing, when you get, you know, you start cranking out big man tokens. And then at some point you've got like six big man tokens halfway through the game and you start quaking the entire map. There's no better figure in my mind, like from an animated set than that. That's just hilarious and great. Right on. Uh, my best had to go to Static Shock. Um, dude, uh, out of all of these shows, Batman Animated Series, X-Men Animated, blah, 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 whatever, I watch Static Shock the most, and I freaking love him as a character. He is just, he's awesome. Uh, worst has to go to Aquaman. Um, it was painful uh, pulling him as my chase. I was, like, super duper bummed. I'm like, Aquaman is kind of a, kind of a loser. Like a what? Fish thing. I've uh, made there, so many teams with that Aquaman. Have you really? Yeah. I try to put him on a lot of teams when I first got him, and I'm just like, I hate playing Aquaman. So he's, much. I mean, he's hilarious and not great, 
But he's got Empower, and if you stack him with some King Sharks, you can uh, give him some water terrain. So what I did was I gave him uh, I gave him the Throg Hammer. I don't know what it's called. Uh, Mini Mjolnir. Um, sure, fro- it makes, Frog Mjolnir. Whatever. <laughs> it makes uh, Aquaman tiny. And then I just had a King Shark carry him around, so they were never not in water, and they always had that in power. And it was, I mean, it was fun for me. It didn't do well when I tested it competitively at all. I instantly scrapped the idea. (laughs) Oh, man, it sounds like a fun team, though. And my all-time favorite hero clicks, uh, based on a cartoon, is the Venom Harness. This is the only figure I have played a ton. Uh, I've probably played this figure, quote-unquote, this equipment, uh, the Venom Harness. It just, it has to go, it has to be my favorite, because I've played it countless times, and I freaking love it. Who doesn't love plus one stats in Battle Fury? I think that's dope as heck. Come on. Uh, so that is number one. Next up is best, worst, and favorite uh, Heroclix sculpts based on cartoon versions of that character. All right. I went, for best, I went with Satana. Um, she's got, like, the the magic smoke stuff coming around. She's got a little bat on the end of her wand. Uh, she looks great. That's definitely best sculpt in my opinion. Worst, I went with the Joker, the the generic Joker, the J Man. They had like they all shared the same sculpt. Uh, he's just got like a finger in the air in his like normal suit. Um, I want a little bit more meat on my Joker bones, if you know what I mean. You know, I, I want him to. I want him to be doing something interesting, maybe like holding like the chattering teeth or have a pile of chattering teeth around him or something. Uh, I don't know. The Christmas Joker was cool, but oh, sure. I'm, I'm talking about just like the, the common, uncommon ones. And then my favorite was the ventriloquist because he's holding Scarface. And that's just like, I don't know. It's the only Jeff Dunham we have in Hero Clicks. Right. <laughs> forgot about man that guy was hilarious oh my gosh you want to talk about killing a lot of time jeff dunham you can kill a ton of time watching him on youtube he is funny oh my goodness uh so my best um it went to adam i really dig it like he's not like the biggest sculptor writer obviously um but he's just chilling with george washington man i just think that's so cool i think he's really dope yeah that is a great Uh, <laughs> worst is gonna go to Toad because Toad's the worst. So you know, I hate Toad. Just, uh, that's pretty easy to say. Um, and my favorite so far is Eugene. Um, he would have been for sure my favorite if he had a white suit. But either way, uh, Dorky Juggernaut is hilarious, and I think it's awesome. I think it's really funny. Hey Calder. Yo. You know what happens when a Toad's struck by lightning? No, I don't. What the same thing that happens to everything else. Everything else. That's a little Halle Berry for you. A little uh, at her best, Halle Berry. At Shot her back to X1, the first X-Men uh Statue movie. of Liberty, <laughs> killing Darth Maul. So, Just like that. A little bit of tangent. That uh, that line was actually supposed to have like some some semblance of making sense, because Toad was supposed to have lines in that movie, and he would say... Do you know what, like, a toad does in this situation? Do you know what a toad does in that situation? Like, he, throughout the movie, he was supposed to say a bunch of stuff like that. And then Storm was supposed to have this, like, she turned it, she flipped it, you know? That was, like, why... That would have been awesome. That yeah, been except sense. what we like, got was sense. made zero Way. sense. Just it's like, you know what happens way. to a toad when it gets struck? It's like, yeah, it... You know, it gets hit by lightning. That's bad for it. Explodes or whatever. Fries. Like, yeah. Congratulations. That would have been way cooler. Man, I the more I hear about the behind-the-scenes, like, X-Men movies, I realize how much better of movies we could have got. Makes me really bummed. Yeah. Not to get too much on the tangent. Too much tangent. Um, I'll, I'll cut myself off. Number three, which uh, HeroQuest characters do you want or don't want to be included in a Justice League Unlimited animated set? So... What I put down is for, strictly for, uh, what would you call it, uh, like sub, subgroups within the set. These aren't Justice League animated per se. This would be other animated licenses that DC has. So my hope was, uh, the Justice League Gods and Monsters. If you haven't seen that movie, it's a retelling of the Trinity where Superman is Zod. I think Wonder Woman is like, Big Barda, maybe, 
Um, and then Batman is, I want to say, uh, I'm, I'm going to, I'm not going to say, cause I don't remember the guy's name, but the guy who's normally man bat and most Batman, oh, sure. stuff, he is Batman instead. So he's like an actual vampire. Um, and it's, it's a cool retelling of the, like the generic Trinity story, um, I I did a huge long write on it, write up on it like when it first came out a long time ago, but like Lex Luthor becomes Metron at the end, and there's like all kinds of crazy. There's so many, so many th- like characters and stuff that you see that are in normal DC comics, but in this universe they have a different role, or they're you know they're not an actual superhero or what have you. So that was one of them. Uh, I also put the brave and the bold for the same reasons. I want a Buana Beast. Buana Beast <laughs> is my boy. He is amazing. I love him in the brave and the bold. He's like, hey, there's a tiger. There's a killer bee. We've got a tiger killer bee now. Like, it's a tiger that can fly and has a stinger. Like, you know, he would just combine weird stuff all the time, and it was amazing. Also, the Aquaman from Brave and the Bold was just oh, like... Oh, he's so awesome. He's hilarious. <laughs> I loved that Aquaman. Um, and then I already mentioned it. I want a Justice League Flash. So when I imagine Flash, I imagine there's a pivotal moment in the Justice League cartoon, I believe, you know, don't always take me at my word. There's okay. a pivotal moment where Lex Luthor is... Lex Luthor is uh he's basically beaten the entire Justice League and the Flash is all that's like really left standing and he's like, What can you do? You're you're just fast, blah blah blah, like I have the power of Superman now and the Flash starts running faster than he's ever ran and he runs like across the world like a hundred times and gets infinite speed pretty much and starts hitting Lex Luthor like, you know, bam, 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 bam like starts like tearing his armor apart. And he basically, like, sacrifices himself with that move and, like, fades off into the speed force or what have you. But I want a Flash that does something like that. A Flash on that kind of power level is what I'm looking for. Um, I'd also like a Jonah Hex. Oh, yeah. That'd be awesome. It's been a while since we've had one. And, I I mean, I know he made a few appearances. Uh, I'd go with our Justice Riders that we'll have for a little bit longer. Um, Dope. and then the Justice Lords, which is kind of, kind of KC-ish, you know, it was like a, I think it was an alternate reality thing or, you know, multiverse thing, but I'd like to see some Justice Lords in there. And that's all I, that's all I really hope for. Nice. Uh, right on. I know the, we got to see some Legion of Doom previewed. I really, really badly want a Lex Luthor Legion of Doom I would also love it if they did objects in this set as well, and we got a Lex Luthor uh, stealing 40 cakes, and that's terrible. That would be really great. If you know, you know. If you don't, you don't, and that's okay. I'd love a Doomsday. Doomsday appeared really quick, killed Superman, and then died instantaneously like he does normally. So a uh, cool animated Doomsday. It didn't look the best, but it would be cool to get anyways. Uh, to go with Brave and the Bold, if you haven't seen it, guys, uh, watch it. It's super awesome. It's a great ride. Um, but Guy Gardner, for some reason, was the main Green Lantern in Brave and the Bold, and I freaking loved it. And it was classic, bull-cut guy, and uh, he was just so dope. So I, I would really dig. If they ever do a Brave and the Bold-style set, Guy needs to be in it. And then Aquaman, uh, like Simeon said. Uh, there's this amazing episode where Flash and Lex Luthor – switched bodies uh, okay. i honestly can't remember for whatever reason it was but the best part is when lex was like ah i can know who the flash is and he takes the mask off and he's like i have no idea who this is and yeah, it's just awesome <laughs> he absolutely deadpans the line he like it's just like it's like this big reveal and he's like i have no idea who this is <laughs> like and now i know the identity of the flash oh, oh. that guy so yeah it's really great uh, Flash doesn't wash his hands because, you know, he's evil. Like, <laughs> it, it could evil. be great. Like, if they made this uh, a prime version of each other, it would be hilarious. Like, like they did with Killer Croc, right. yeah. They absolutely should. Yeah. And if they don't, you know, they aren't listening like I thought down. they were. Be let down. And then, of course, uh, anything to fill out, Static's Rogues Gallery. Static Shock was a villain of the week show, pretty much. It was just 
who's the next person that got mutated in the like whatever fight that happened and so any static shock characters i'm always down for number four which cartoons do you enjoy as a child and now as an adult so my list Jimmy. for this is very short um okay. There's not a lot of cartoons that I watched as a child. I mean, I watched a lot of cartoons as a child, but most of them ended. Um, so I could name off, you know, like Ultimate Muscle, which was an anime about pro wrestling. And it was like pro wrestling. For, I Look up the, if you have, you know, 30 seconds, look up Intro to Ultimate Muscle, and you'll get the entire basis of the show. It's like, bad guys show up from out of space we're here to power slam them in the face like it's <laughs> it's so ridiculous but it's if you like pro wrestling and you happen to like anime it is the combination of the two um but i didn't put that on the list because i don't okay. watch um well, things right. that i i do still watch and i enjoyed as a child are scooby-doo Ooh, uh, yeah. i put studio ghibli which, uh, it's like, uh, My Neighbor, The Big Show, um, you know, Princess Mononoke, uh, you know, like, all those really classic, like, if someone's going to introduce you to anime, they will start you off with Studio Ghibli, usually. They're great stories, beautiful animation, um, just really great. And then, last but not least... Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys. I loved this show. Is that a real show? It is Calder. It is absolutely a <laughs> absolutely a real show. So this show was only on for like three years, I want to say. But this show was amazing, and I'm not just saying that as because it had my name in it. I'm not just saying wow, that. It's a real show. Although. <laughs> It is a real show called. Oh my god! I'm sorry, I had to look. I had to look it up. I had to Google it. Oh it my is, gosh! It's beautiful. Just watch, watch intro for it. And uh, so, Captain Simeon and the Space Monkeys, if you couldn't tell, is about a captain and his space monkeys. They are all monkeys. Um, so it was, you know, is geared towards younger children, which I was at the time. And I was fixed to it because it had my name. So whenever they said, like, Captain Simeon, I'd be like, oh, what? That's me, you know. But if you're a fan of Star Trek or just sci-fi in general, there are so many Star Trek jokes and uh, parodies in this that watching it after watching the original series is amazing. Like, they have these uh, these things called the hollow boons, which are holographic baboons that they use for, like, a lot of tasks and stuff. And every now and then, one of them will, like, spit out a William Shatner catchphrase, like, in his style of talking. And it's hilarious. It's really campy, and it's really dumb, but it's you can watch it absolutely free on YouTube, like, the whole series. Wow. Just, just... I'm taking over this podcast, Calder. It's a Captain just... in the Space Monkeys podcast now. Wow. But, I mean, I totally vibe with that. Having a weird name myself, hearing it is really cool, and I understand, like, uh, vibing with something like that. Well, and it's spelled wow. like like the Simeon Monkey. Well, obviously, Simeon monkey, yeah, it's you spelled know, like so. Simeon, like Monkey, and not like... Like me. Yo, on, like, <laughs> how you have it, whatever. Yeah, how I pretend to be named. Right. I fake um, name. So, uh, I'll try to keep it uh, short. I had a pretty big list. Obviously, kids watch uh, cartoons. It's, uh, it's pretty legit. Uh, Superhero Squad is one of the favorite ones I had. It was the turn of not being a kid anymore, and I really enjoyed Superhero Squad. It was dope. Uh, Veggie Tales, Fairly Odd Parents, Jimmy Neutron, Codename Kids Next Door, uh, Ed, Ed, Nettie. These were these were my this is my era. Recess uh, was a great one. Um, no, I I love these cartoons. X Men Evolution. Miss Finster, uh, Miss Finster. Yeah, like, these were great. <laughs> these were seriously a great era. This is, like, a great 10-year span. I mean, I'm I at, freaking love cartoons. So I would play Randall if he was a figure. Oh, dude. What a jerk. What, a jerk. <laughs> um, what was another great I I had a lot of uh, 90s rerun, like, cartoons. Like, I'm not a 90s kid, obviously, but, like, there were a lot of reruns I watched. Hey Arnold was one of my favorite cartoons, like, ever. People would get mad at me for knowing Hey Arnold and, like, liking it. I'm like, sorry, I guess. I don't know. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, but no, yeah, I, I watch a ton of cartoons, and I love them. Cartoons I watch to this day, 
um, that are still like cartoons and kids shows. Obviously, none of old. Uh, let's say VeggieTales are classics. I watch VeggieTales all the time, uh, even if they're old. I'll rewatch them. Um, but like Star vs. the Forces of Evil, uh, mostly Disney cartoons like that. I watch. Um, it's pretty campy, but it's pretty fun. I really enjoy Gravity Falls. Uh, really, really enjoy Gravity Falls. It is it's super dope. Uh, so those are pretty much the only ones I really watch to this day that are like cartoons. Um, next up, do you think those cartoons you enjoy will ever become Hero Clips? Uh, first off, no. Uh, if so, which characters would you want in that set? Yeah, so <clears throat> out of the ones I listed, Scooby-Doo is the only one I can imagine they could ever... Oh, yeah, Scooby-Doo. I totally meant to say Scooby-Doo, too. I just forgot. Yeah, that's, that's the only one I can imagine that... Because uh, a while back, like uh, a while back, there was a I, – I don't know oh, if yeah. it was a joke post or not, but they did say they were coming out with Toon Clicks, and Scooby-Doo was one of, like, the head runners for it. And they, they never got beyond, like, production phase. If it was a real thing, I'm not going to say that it was because I've been told it wasn't, but if – out of the ones I listed, if they were going to make a set – I think Scooby-Doo would be the only potential one. And what we could see in a set like that is, I mean, similar to, like, Rest in Peace set or Undead set, um, it would just be a bunch of monsters, you know, like the Monsters of the Week. They've got a lot of cool ones. Uh, and then I would like to see the main cast as, like, either either shifting focus or maybe bring back the promotion mm. mechanic where, you know, Scooby and Shaggy would be scared at the beginning, but then they'd pull it together and, you know, you'd yeah. promote to the figure where it's like Scooby would have, like, a 12 attack blades with exploit kind of thing. <laughs> <laughs> and Shaggy would have, you know, a 12 attack pensai nice. with, <laughs> with outwit and seven damage because he Shaggy fight him. I don't know. Well, I don't... Hey there, Kakarot. You don't even get 100% of my power, like, Jinkies, or oh, whatever if they, if the they shaggy went with, meme thing was earlier. Yeah, time. if they went with the the shaggy meme, it was like, shaggy. oh wow, I almost had to use seven percent of my power to rewrite the entire universe. Yoinks. <laughs> yeah, uh, that'd be great. Um, out of the ones I listed, uh, as much as I would love a special object uh, at an any jawbreaker would be great. Um, but codenamed Kids Next Door for sure has the highest potential to be um, in a HeroClick set. Uh, my favorite episode is their Christmas episode because it's my favorite holiday. And they fight Christmas versions of the X-Men. Nightcrawler is the Nutcracker. And he's just like a Nutcracker that teleports and there's, like, Storm, and there's Wolverine. I can't remember his name, but he had, like, Candy Cane Claws, and <laughs> Colossus is, like, this walking tree thing. Like, it is it is awesome. That is one of the coolest episodes ever. Uh, Conan Kid Next Door also had a very straight, just, boom, cast of, like, kids. They all had numbers, number one, number two, number three, four, whatever, et cetera, you know? They yeah. all had little gadgets to use, mustard guns or, like, whatever, ketchup and staplers that shot, like, r- random rays, you know, a great team base for the kids that live down the lane or whatever, like a figure that takes damage whenever one of them loses, and all the adults that were evil or even that evil baby, you know, like those would all be so awesome. Like it could totally work in Hero Clicks. It's a very like violent like set show. They also had like mechs and stuff too, so it was great, like ships and whatever. So it was totally a show that was like built. Um, like, you would have sworn it was built to sell toys, but, like, it kind of wasn't because they didn't really have that many toys anyways. But, like, with all the stuff they had, you're like, yeah, they totally made toys. Uh, so that would totally work in a set. Uh, let's see, number six, since I am living in Japan, I must ask about Japanese cartoons, a.k.a. anime. Which anime do you enjoy to watch? And do you, have you ever tried to listen to them in Japanese? I'll give this to Simeon. So, go for it. <clears throat> I already know Calder's, Calder's yeah, preference, yeah. but... In the anime community, there are either subs or dubs. I am a sub myself. I like <sighs> subtitles. Um, so I always listen in in the, the normal Japanese, which the main reason is you'll get subs, subtitles, I should say. You'll get subtitles way earlier than you'll get the, the dubbing because it takes work and it takes, you know, it takes – people and actors, voice actors and translations 
to get the dubbing. Um, but beyond that, uh, anime is just, I mean, there's, there's so many to choose from. There's so many great ones, but off the top of my head, the ones I've been watching lately would be like My Hero Academia, um, Mob Psycho 100, Jojo, Hunter Hunter, Soul Eater, Bleach, I think it's on episode 5 million, I'll Never yeah, Catch Up, like <laughs> Fairy Tale, uh, you know, it, the list goes on. There's so many animes that I absolutely will not start because it's over 500 episodes in. Oh, for sure, yeah. I, I won't ever start Dragon Ball Z. People yeah, love Dragon Ball Z, agreed. and there's so much of it I can't even begin. Um, but that brings me into, like, there's Calder, I don't know if I'm going to go over your head with this, but there's differences in anime. So there's there's shonen, which is like the ones I just listed off. I know this. Don't, and then don't, there's don't worry about it. yeah, there's shonen jump, which a lot of people know. And that's geared towards, you know, younger adolescents. And then there's what's called sinin or sign I think it's sinin, I don't know. I don't speak Japanese, so I I'm not going to pretend I ana- pronunciated this right. Um, but sinin's like the older male kind of style. Um, which is like Berserker, or I think it's just Berserk. There's like Berserk, and it's like the darker, grittier kind of stuff. Um, Fist of the North Star, Berserk, stuff like that. Yeah, basically. and like, I'd love to see some of that too. Um, it's just not as popular because, I mean, it's it's darker, and you know, it's there's less people that uh, like Netflix isn't gonna pick up all of them, but. Then there's also like shoujo, which is uh, kind of like lighter shonen stuff. And there's, I mean, I don't, I don't watch a lot of it. I mostly watch like the shonen stuff because I'm a kid at heart, I suppose. But yeah, it's my little trivia. I'm sure that there's people that are more knowledgeable about it. But so I'll go ahead and answer. Uh, you do know my answer pretty much. Um, I speak English. I don't know why I wouldn't want to listen to other people also speaking English. This confuses the heck out of me. In the anime community, it is more common for a person to listen to Japanese, even if they don't understand it at all. I, this makes zero sense to me. I literally do not understand why you would want to read subtitles and not hear the voices. I've tried. I joined an anime club one time, and they are like, we only do subs here, so if you don't like subtitles, get out. You don't get free Doritos or free Mountain Dew. You just have to leave. And I was watching a scene. Um, we watched two shows that day. Uh, some, some of my favorite animes. I'll list up my favorite ones right now. Uh, Gurren Lagann, all-time favorite. Uh, oh, yeah. Our Adventure, Full Metal Alchemist Brotherhood, Soul Eater, My Hero Academia, uh, Death Note, just to name a few. I seriously, I try to watch everything. Um, I do really enjoy Fairy Tale. Stuff like that. I really like those. But we were watching Gurren Lagann, and all of Kamina's, and he gives these amazing speeches. He's, one of my, he's my all-time favorite anime character ever. He gives these amazing speeches that are really riveting, that really get the blood flowing, that, like, make you, like, you know, it's, we got to be manly and whatever. And, and it had no punch because it's just uh, sushi roll, Hazazaki, Kyoto, you know, mini bar, like, whatever. I, that, that's super <laughs> offensive. But, mini bars. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I know. I don't know why I said that, but like it was like chopstick, but whatever. I'm like that has no that has no punch. That's got no gut to it. Like you don't sound like come on, Simo. Like like there's no there's no weight to your words. I can't tell what emotion you're trying to convey because I don't understand what you're saying. I can't tell the emotion in your voice because I don't just understand it all. There's a barrier there, and it's very real for me. And I just can't watch anime when it's in a language I don't understand. Same thing in Death Note. Um. It's already a very serious tone, but, like, some people just sounded straight up rude when I know they just mean to sound, like, concerning or whatever. Like, it felt belittling to people, even though that's, like, L's whole thing. But, like, I know how he is in some of those scenes because I've already watched the show, and I'm like, this isn't the characters. They're not acting the way I know. And just because of how much it changes it, and it's it to me it's unwatchable. And I, I, I hate to sound super close-minded and whatever, like, rah, 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 it's not American, it's whatever, but... Uh, to me, it's unwatchable. I don't watch anything unless it's in a language I understand, and I'm sorry, I only understand one of them. So, yeah. I, I, it feels like a super bummer, and everybody uh, everybody in the anime community disagrees with me anyway, so take it with a grain of salt, but, like, I just, I can't watch it unless it's in English. So, yeah. Will Moving Defoe, on to... Uh, sold that, that movie, by the way. Oh, yeah? Death Wait, Note, yeah. Oh, no, oh, yeah, he, oh, dude. Yeah, 
Oh yeah, as the Shinigami dude. Yeah, yeah. for sure. So no, like you realize the, William Defoe is actually an angel of death. Like you kind of like oh, that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, sure. Um, I think that it's absolutely fine to only watch dubs. Like, I think that's absolutely fine. Um, I prefer subtitles because it's and my reason probably is just as bad as your reason for not like watching subs. But my reason for watching subs is because when you're watching My Hero Academia and you watch it like the subtitles, uh, you lose something when you go to like the dub version. And that's when, uh, um, oh my gosh, I'm blanking on the guy's name. All Might, maybe? What's that? No. All Might? Or All Might, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. All Might. When, uh, when All Might, he'll be speaking in Japanese. And so if you don't know, Japanese has like three kind of dialects. Uh, Malcolm, you're, you're going to have to help me with this um, because I'm, I'm obviously I don't live in Japan. I don't speak Japanese. I'm I'm barely functioning at speaking <laughs> English. But I believe Japanese has three dialects. There's like a Chinese kind of variation. There's the like the true Japanese variation. And then there's these like American words where they just don't have a translation like readily available. So every now and then when you watch a subtitled anime, you'll hear like actual American words just said through a thick accent from somebody who doesn't speak English. And so if you watch the subtitled My Hero Academia, All Might will be like giving a speech and he'll be like, you know, saying words and then he'll just say, Detroit Smash! And <laughs> it absolutely, That's actually kind of cool. It does not sound like anyone would say, you know, like, Detroit Smash! You know, like, I am a... I'm American, man, and this is my Detroit punch. Like, and it just loses a little bit for me when it gets uh, when it gets dubbed. But also uh, with Fairy Tale, the the ice guy, you know, like gray. Yeah, he does ice stuff, and he always he does the uh, the subtitled version. He always says like ice make, and then whatever he makes, he'll say like ice make shield, ice make spear, yeah. like. It's amazing, and that's the main reason I do subtitles. Okay, that, that, that is pretty cool. I don't know if one or two moments in an episode will get me to switch, but that is kind of cool. I, I can dig it, though. That's neat. Um, number seven, do you want those anime characters into Hero Clicks, and do you think WizKids would do it? Number one, yes, 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 yes. Please make them into Hero Clicks. Yes, 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 yes. Will they ever do it? Ah. Yeah, I absolutely... I hope they do a Shonen Jump or, you know, like, it would have to be, like, a fairly inclusive set. I don't think they're going to get, like, one title or two titles. If they did, you know, more power to them. I'd love to get that. But if they were to get a Shonen Jump, you know, like Naruto, Bleach, you know, like, just, like, a bunch of, like, random stuff and just put, like, one or two characters from each, it would absolutely sell out. And oh yeah, I agree. I don't. I don't see it coming down the pipeline. Um, sadly, I just, I don't know where the rights lie, and I just don't see WizKids picking it up anytime soon. So I don't know what it is with like card games. Maybe they have to be a physical board game. But like Weiss Schwarz has a lockdown on like anime properties uh, for card games right now. It's just a card game and. Uh, so yeah, I don't know if it's locked up in there or if card games are different. I I would have to have um, a set that's like the like that Shonen Force like video game where it was like two or three fi people from like almost everything pretty much would have to be the set that would appease the most people. Like if you made a Dragon Ball set, I wouldn't buy it. Like I, I would be like I feel like I, I'd feel obliged to support anime, blah blah blah. But if you made like Naruto, Dragon Ball, One Piece, I'd be like, nah, I really don't want to buy it. I don't care about any of those, which offended like maybe three people, so whatever. Yeah. Um, and <laughs> even with yeah. cartoons, like, even, like, you know, going back to, the, you know, Scooby-Doo and, uh, like, Courage the Cowardly Dog, SpongeBob, stuff like that, even though they're not, like, actively making board games that I know of for those or, like, miniatures for those, I just think they they don't, like, have the rights for it. Like, they, it'd be really yeah. hard to get the rights for that kind of stuff. All right, uh, let's swing it back to Hero Clicks, uh, really more focused. Um, if WizKids ever brought back Yu-Gi-Oh! Hero Clicks, how would you improve it? 
Hmm. So, I never played when Yu-Gi-Oh was happening. So I, I have played Yu-Gi-Oh clicks. Um, I've played the Karibos, the Catapult Turtle. I've played Exodia once or twice. I've I've played the big like things that people actually sought out in those sets, and that's what like. That's how I would change it or improve it. I'd make it, I'd make the figures easier to build with, to start with. You know, I'd give them more keywords that actually make sense to build with. Um, I'd include like some of the newer mechanics, maybe like title characters or, you know, mm-hmm. stuff like that. Maybe you know, get like a dual master, like Yugi. I think he's one of them. Um, I You're like. Right. <laughs> am I? And then I'd get rid of that totally. the spell and trap mechanic. You know. Mm-hmm. Um, Although I do like it as being like, you know, like the grenade pool from Halo, I like that it's a separate mechanic that was interesting. It was so hard to decipher that nine times out of ten, I never even bothered doing it. And so I would just get rid of that and maybe, like, give them a stop click that, you know, it's like this or the other, you know, kind of thing where you do the spell mechanic. Or like a Colossal Retaliator where if you want it to be a trap, or a spell, it's like, did a character take damage since your last turn? Well, you get to, like, do this benefit, or you get to attack them, you know? Something like that. Simplify it. Yeah. Okay, I'm kind of along the same way. Um, I love Yu-Gi-Oh! I I always forget to, like, mention this stuff, but I I friggin' love Yu-Gi-Oh! It's awesome. Joey Wheeler? Joey Wheeler is my man. Uh, He's my bro. Bandit Keith, second my man. He's dope as heck. I love those guys. Um... I like the idea of making human people sort of as entities that you put on the sideline uh, to play. So like a Seto Kaiba, Tristan, Joey, Bandit Keith, um, Valentine, you know, even Weevil, like whoever. Like, give us everyone, you know. Make them characters you put on your sideline to know this is that main person's whatever monster that they are fighting with right now. Number two, uh, make them modern compatible, but don't make them bad, right? So it was Golden Age from the start, which already hurt its sales a ton and it also just the stats on some of these were terrible number one and number two their point values were all weird and i know it was still kind of in the age where the point values might be weird but it was like 64 72 you know 58 blah 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 it was just really wacky point values you know not this is why five or something you know not n- nothing helpful and a lot of the figures Besides just having standard, it felt like they phoned them in. It felt like they gave this to, like, their C squad, which is just Carl over there with, like, a uh, computer, <laughs> like, graphic design, just quickly making figures, who's, like, watched, like, the first season of Yu-Gi-Oh! is, like, how it felt this set was made. And it was just, like, ah, random point value, whatever. Like, give them charge blades, nine attack, two damage, whatever, you know, a 13 million speed, like... Oh, it's the a lizard man. Make... He's, yeah, he's lizard got a sword. Man. He's he's, he's going to have charge and blades and uh, toughness. Like it. Let's make like a, the figures. Let's make were... four star ladybug. And <laughs> yeah, everyone will get twelve because it's a common. And besides, like the figures that were either really cheap, like thirty points, or the ones that were really expensive, there were so many in this middle area that were just like, uh. But you know, it's a hundred points. It's not great, but it's just kind of not good you know like the sculpts are all really cool that's one thing i'll give to the Yu-Gi-Oh set besides a few really bad plain looking ones all the ones you wanted to look good um dark magician girl flame swordsman etc stuff like that all the dragons um those all look great um but yeah no make human people on the sideline make it modern make it modern compatible give them better stats better powers uh, care a little bit more about the set yeah number go to, go to cool stuff and look at look at all the figures from Yu-Gi-Oh yeah. sets that sell for more than like ten cents. Look at all the figures that are like a dollar fifty more, and that's all that people actually wanted. And yeah. so, if WizKids redid it, just take a note from your secondary like markets, and you know, see the figures that people actually cared about and wanted to spend money on. Right. Uh, like, what did we do right with those figures? Number nine. Which Yu-Gi-Oh characters do you want WizKids to redo? With new dials, and which new characters do you want? So, I didn't watch Yu-Gi-Oh! I never played the card game. My entire experience with Yu-Gi-Oh! is from seeing a few episodes, and one of the terrible episodes that I saw, they were, like, dueling, but on motorcycles. Oh, yeah, this is going to be one of the answers. (laughs) And so, 
I don't know. I, I'd like to see a special object where it's the dueling disc. Because we've joked about bringing this to, like, WizKid competitions and putting our ID cards or something in them. I'd love to yeah. see a special object with a dueling disc where it's got, like, a mechanic that, you know, brings in monsters from your sideline or something. Um, but other than that, my only real answer is Exodia, because that's that's really the only Yu-Gi-Oh figure that, like, stands out to me as something, like, I know what this did in in the actual card game, and I know what it did in the show. And so I'd like to see an Exodia. The one that we got is super cool. Don't get me wrong. Uh, I like playing with them when we do huge battles. But I'd like to see one with, like, a game-winning mechanic similar to, like, Black Swan, where you can play them on your sideline and you have to, like, meet certain criterias to, you know, like, get, like, the arms, the legs, and then, like, the head. And then once Ooh. you've built Exodia, the game ends and you win, you know. Now, obviously, don't make it easy to do that. You know, it'd be something where you'd have to build your team around it, and if your opponent realizes that's what your team is built around, they can counter it by just killing your team real quick. But I think it'd be, like, a really cool thing to try. Right on. Uh, I think uh, every HeroClix uh, game should have the ability to say, do you want to go out on motorcycles and play card games on motorcycles? Absolutely. Yes, let's do that. So, clearly Yu-Gi-Oh! 5D is the only Yu-Gi-Oh! that ever needs to be made. That was such an awesome show. Dude, it was so extreme. It was so dope. Um, I like the idea of remaking Zodia. Like, maybe make him, like, a Hulkbuster. Bring back that old thing where you, like, actually plugged, like, the pieces into one big base or whatever. Maybe. Like, something cool like that. Really make him real beefy with a deeper dial and whatnot. He's already really cool. I um I pretty much like all the figures I would want new versions of are just new better versions of Joey Wheeler's like characters just like like he was a total side character who was meant to be blown off like 90% of the time but like Joey's my man so we just need updated Joey ones and uh we need a better uh blue eyes white dragon to like be like real scary like he needs to be just nuts like crazy nuts you know I would also really like maps where there there were some episodes of Yu-Gi-Oh where like it was kind of straight up like saw if you lost it like you're gonna get your legs cut off or like whatever I can't remember what it was like it was like a buzz saw going towards someone I would really dig a map like that where if you start losing figures um your like theoretical uh duelists or characters on the sideline would start taking damage that'd be really cool oh by the way before we duel I made a special rule where you have to eat a cyanide capsule <laughs> for every point of health that you lose. <laughs> <laughs> but like that would just like happen it's like oh like, it's I, like sign, I didn't sign a waiver for I mean, that they had whatever. to make the stakes higher because it was a card game within an anime so yeah it had to be like a, a fighting anime where the figure like the characters the main characters didn't actually ever get into danger so they had to introduce right. actual danger to them and number 10 uh what is your favorite line from the cartoons you watched over the years, and a favorite uh, final line in those cartoons. I didn't really uh, know what to think of, like, final line, so I'm going to have to Google something really quick. You want to go ahead and take us away, Simeon? I also didn't come up with a final line, but um, favorite line, absolutely, is from the Batman animated, I believe. Um, it's that famous, like, he's, uh, I think he's, like, mind-controlled, or he's on, like, a drug or something, Batman is, and the person messing with his mind is trying to convince him that he's his dad and, like, just trying to really warp his, his like, sense of, like, what's real and not. And it's like, you're, uh, you're terrible. I don't remember <laughs> something like that. And he's like, I'm not terrible. I am vengeance. I am the knight. I am Batman. Like, that, that famous line. I love that. Um, and then from, Bra from Batman, the Brave and the Bold, Aquaman has so many great one-liners, but one that I love the most is in an episode where the Atom shrinks down with him, and they're in, like, a forest or a jungle or something, and for some reason, I think they can't get bigger. Like, Adam, they got shrunk down, and, like, they couldn't get bigger again for some reason, and they're like, oh, we need to ride out of here, and Aquaman whistles, and this bug, like, comes up, and... <laughs> <laughs> and uh, the Adam's like, I thought you could only talk to a fish. And Aquaman just says, a fish is a fish, even if it's a bug. 
because it's a silverfish. And <laughs> it's, it's so bad. And Okay, it's like, Aquaman. It's the best part of that series, bar none. Jeez. Uh, so, any classic uh, line from a, uh, a cartoon is, of course, Boomerang, you do always come back, uh, if you know, you know. Just saying, it was always good to see Boomerang come back to Sokka. Um, I had to look up the last line for that, uh, but really quick, uh, my favorite all-time uh, from Anime is, uh, don't believe in yourself, believe in the me that believes in you. Uh, I really like that line uh, from Kamina. That was pretty great. Uh, but the last line from uh, Avatar, it was Toph saying it. She's blind, and she says, well, I think you all look perfect. And that was a pretty good way to end it, oh. I'll, I'll, I'll say for that. Yeah. So that those are Malcolm Rush's Heroclix questions of the week. Ladies and gentlemen, we did it. Now, we're not quite done yet because someone forgot to look this up earlier in the podcast. This is a long show. You guys haven't noticed. Uh, it's a bit of a long show, and it is close to 1 a.m. <laughs> Good <laughs> Lord. Oh, goodness. Here we are. Okay, but cool. We have Jedi Legends Heroclix Tip of the Week. You don't want to sell me death sticks. I don't want to sell you death sticks. You want to go home and rethink your life. I want to go home and rethink my life. <laughs> Jedi Legends here, Hooks of the Week, is after being carried, the passenger cannot be given a cost of action. Free actions are fine, though. Well, I don't know what figure you're playing, uh, but the figures I play, um, Sam Cap, <laughs> can totally be given actions after being carried. It's the only figure to carry, let's be honest here. Uh, but no, he does give a really point. Uh, so free actions, I love doing stuff after being carried, and free actions are awesome. Specifically free actions that get, like, that let you punch people. Medusa, Earth X Cap. Bethrox in the like I love free actions after being carried. It's awesome. But no, yeah, it's a good tip. It's a good tip, guys. Can't be doing costed, but like look at it for all those figures. They can do, you know, stuff is free. Especially make an attack or like Shredder, which is like sidestep, and then ping someone. So yeah. a pretty good tip to keep in mind. Anyone that can that is... make a bystander for free. Ooh, yep. The bystander is not beholden to that rule, so once they've been carried and the bystander is dropped. Also, a uh, fun thing with that Earth X Spider Man, he doesn't technically carry people. He moves past them and then places them. And if they have shifting focus or like that Kobic, you know, rewrite history thing where they like bring in someone from the sideline, that person can also do something. Ah, oh, that is pretty cool. Right on. And that is the community section. Thank you guys so much uh, every week. It's really awesome. And I think we're pretty good to end it here. As a reminder, Dial H for your clicks. We are on Facebook, Twitter, and a whole bunch of other stuff. You can find us listening to the podcast on Podbean, iTunes, and YouTube. And you can check us out on Patreon.com. Simeon, do you want to go ahead and read us out of here? Yeah. Feel free to message us on Facebook or Twitter. Um, Love to hear, like, any kind of comments or, you know, if you say, hey, Simeon says like way too much, I get it. I'm working on it. I know it. But, I mean, I love to hear feedback either way. Um, it's how I grow as a human being. But so that uh, actually kind of reminds me. I'm going to, yeah, no, I'm going to cut you off okay. right there. We had uh, some reviews left on our podcast. I'm going to look those up really quick, actually. Um because I really enjoy getting reviews like this. So uh, these are actually, some of them are kind of old, uh, because they were during when me and Chris was doing it. But uh, Dark Reaper said, Chris and Calder are a better dynamic duo than Batman and Robin. Very informative and entertaining regarding all of your hero clicks content. And let's go. I know we have one more view here. There we go. See y'all. All right, cool. And then one from Silver Aereo Hawk. This podcast is awesome. These guys are super funny and it's super enjoyable. I always really appreciate uh, getting reviews. So pop those down on Podbean, iTunes, and even leave some comments on uh, Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, whatever. And always remember you can send us an email at dialhforheroclicks at gmail.com. That is the last interruption, I promise. All right. And with that, just one last time, we're going to remind you that Dial H for Heroclix is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all of the latest Heroclix singles and sealed products. Check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Support those who support us. 